Today we're installing the Madjax King XD lift kit designed for the Yamaha G29. Included with this kit is a new main front suspension assembly, new spindles, new shocks, and new A-arms. You'll also receive a hardware pack and thread locking adhesive. For the rear components, you'll receive a new track bar relocation bracket as well as a rear goal post. Now let's get started. Before we begin, engage the parking brake, turn the key to the off position, and flip the cart in tow mode. Using a floor jack, lift the front of the cart up and place jack stands under the front frame as shown. With a 19 millimeter socket, remove the front wheels and the front wheel hub and retain the front wheel hub for reinstallation later and repeat this process on the other side. Remove the front bumper with a 10 millimeter socket by taking out the two bolts that hold the brackets to the frame. With a 17 millimeter socket and wrench, remove the tie rod end from the spindle assembly. Rethread the nut back to the tie rod for safekeeping and reinstallation later. Repeat this on the other side. Using a 14 millimeter socket and wrench, remove the nut from the back side of the upper shock bolt, but leave the bolt in place. Then drop down to the lower control arms and remove them from the frame. Once all bolts are removed from the lower control arms, then you can pull the bolt out from the top shock and remove the full assembly. Repeat this process on the other side and be sure to keep all your hardware for reinstallation later. Attach the main suspension assembly to the frame using the supplied M10 by 35 millimeter hex bolts, lock washers, and flat washers. Note that the two vertical tabs located on top of the main suspension assembly go behind the frame's cross member. Hand tighten your hardware for now. Using the supplied U-bolts and hardware, drop the U-bolts over the frame and into the main suspension. Use a 17 millimeter socket and tighten each nut evenly to 35 foot-pounds. Torque the front mounting bolts to 35 foot-pounds with a 17 millimeter socket. Attach your new A-arms to the cart frame. Ensure that the angled section of the A-arm is pointed to the front of the cart and that the shock mount is pointed up. Secure the A-arms using the factory hardware that we retained from earlier. And using a 14 millimeter socket and wrench, torque the bolts to 38 foot-pounds. Repeat this on the other side. If needed, use a rubber mallet to help guide the A-arms into the frame. Install the new shocks to the top of the frame and secure in place using the bolts that we removed from earlier. Then, using the M8 by 60 bolts, flat washers, and nuts included with the kit, attach the lower part of the mounting shock to the upper A-arms. Torque your hardware to 35 foot-pounds using a 14 millimeter socket and wrench. Attach your new spindles to the main suspension and upper A-arms and note that the steering control arm mount goes towards the rear of the vehicle. Secure the spindles using the provided M10 by 80 millimeter hex bolts, flat washers, and nylock nuts. Tighten with a 16 millimeter socket and a 17 millimeter wrench. Attach the factory steering arms to the spindle arms using the factory hardware. Torque with a 17 millimeter socket and wrench to 29 foot-pounds. Attach the factory spindle hubs to the new spindles using a 19 millimeter socket and torque to 84 foot-pounds. Then we're gonna repeat all these steps on the other side. Now's a great time to grease all of your main suspension, spindles, and upper A-arm grease fittings. If installing a counterweight kit, do so now before the tires go on. Click the link below for that video. You can now install your new tires and wheels using a 19 millimeter socket with metric lug nuts and torque the lug nuts to 65 foot-pounds. Then you can lift the cart up, remove the jack stands, and lower the cart to the ground. 
At this time, do not attempt to align or adjust the tow or camber until the rear lift is installed and the cart can be test drove. Also, do not use any tire heights greater than 22 inches on the 4 inch lift kit. Moving to the rear lift, make sure you chalk your front wheels and lift the back of the cart up under the motor to allow jack stands to sit under the frame as shown. Ensure that the jack stands are properly placed under the frame to support the vehicle to avoid damage or possible injury during installation. Using a 19mm socket, remove the rear tires and wheels. Be sure to leave the floor jack in place under the rear motor to support the weight, but don't lift. Using a rivet puller or a flathead screwdriver, temporarily remove the rivets and the motor cover from the cart. Using a 14mm socket and wrench, remove the two factory bolts from the upper shock mounts and retain for later. Using the floor jack that's still in place, slowly lower the motor down to remove the shocks from their mounts to allow us enough room to install the goal post. Install the new goal post with the angled section pointed towards the front of the cart into the shock weldments as shown. You may need to use a rubber mallet to help align the goal post into the shock mounts. Secure with the factory hardware using a 14 millimeter socket and wrench and torque to 38 foot pounds. Attach the factory shocks to the lower ends of the goal post using the supplied M10 by 55 millimeter bolts, flat washers, and nylock nuts. Secure with a 17 millimeter socket and wrench and torque to 38 foot pounds. You will need to use the floor jack to help align the shock with the goal post. Then we're going to repeat all these steps on the other side. Using a 17 millimeter socket and wrench, remove the bolt that secures the track bar to the frame. Attach the track bar relocation bracket to this same point using an M10 by 30 millimeter hex head bolt, flat washers, and a nylock nut, hand tightened for now. Use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the driver side bagwell bolt that holds the bagwell to the frame. Then with a 7 16 bit and the bolt hole as a guide, drill down through all the way in and through the bottom side of the frame. Using the M10 by 90 millimeter hex bolt, drop it down through the frame to attach the bracket using the hardware provided. Secure with a 17 millimeter socket and wrench and torque the track bar hardware to 35 pounds. Note, if installing with a seat kit, the M10 by 90 millimeter bolt will go through the seat kit's bagwell bracket and then down through the frame. You can now reattach your motor cover using the factory rivets. Attach the track bar to the lowest hole of the relocation bracket using the stock hardware from earlier. Secure with a 17 millimeter socket and wrench, then torque the hardware to 65 foot pounds. Using the rear tire well curvature as a guide, trim about one inch of the rear side skirt off to allow for the larger tires with the lift kit. Mark a guideline and then use a rotary cutting tool to trim the bottom corner of the side skirt off as shown. You can now attach your rear tires and wheels using a 19 millimeter socket and metric lug nuts. Repeat these steps on the opposite side. You can now lift the cart up, remove the floor jacks, and lower the car to the ground. Torque the lug nuts to 65 foot-pounds. With the rear lift installed, we can now move to the front of the cart and align the vehicle. To adjust your camber, place a carpenter square at the middle of the tire to check. If there is a gap at the top of the tire, that is negative camber. If there is a gap at the bottom, that's positive camber. Our goal is to achieve a zero camber. To adjust the camber, loosen the jam nuts with a 21 millimeter wrench on each side of the upper A-arms turnbuckle. Then using a 19 millimeter wrench, turn the center of the turnbuckle in or out as needed. While doing this, continually check that the tire is being adjusted correctly to the framing square. Once the camber is properly adjusted, tighten each jam nut to the upper A-arm using the 21 millimeter wrench, and then repeat on the opposite side. To adjust the toe, first thing you wanna do is make sure that your steering wheel is straight, then Using a tape measure, find a good common center point in each tire and measure across the front and then across the rear of the tire. What you're looking for here is that the front should be an eighth to a quarter eight inch shorter 
then the same measurement on the rear of the tire. So we have a toe in. To adjust the toe, loosen the jam nut on the end of each steering rack with a 17 millimeter wrench. Then turn the extension using a 12 millimeter wrench as needed to move the tires in or out. Continually check your measurements to make sure that the toe in is at the proper setting. Once you're happy with it, then tighten the jam nuts on the steering racks. At this point, you want to test drive the vehicle around a little bit and come back and check both your camber and your toe. If needed, simply repeat these previous steps to dial in your toe and camber. Be sure to attach the supplied warning label in an area that is visible to the driver of the vehicle. With your front alignment correct, you can attach your factory bumper. And now you've finished installing your Majax King XD lift kit designed for the Yamaha G29.